It's the start of week two. So, how you doing so far? Hey everybody, for the rest of our time together, I'm going to put up videos every week that give my thoughts on the stuff that happened uh, the week before and give you a little bit of setup for what you have coming up. Uh, this way we can have a little bit more communication. I know doing the summer class online kind of makes it seem a lot of the times like we're completely all isolated. Hopefully this will help in a little bit. So things I learned this weekend. One, I need to pay a lot more attention when I load up Blackboard because I had the wrong syllabus up and I only caught that halfway through grading your syllabus quizzes. So if you found anything like the ethics essay isn't worth that much, please ignore those comments. Um, I had the old syllabus up from when I first started working on the course and I always meant to update the most current one before we started and I completely forgot. So go back to wherever you downloaded the syllabus to begin with, get the syllabus and the major assignment sheet. If you don't have those, uh, well you need to ditch whatever you have already and get those. Give them another read through because some details have changed. The point scheme is a bit different. Uh, so sorry about that and if you see anything else that doesn't make sense just let me know and I'm happy to clarify. Secondly, I've been getting grading done, and there's a few issues that have come up. First, there's some missing work. There's a few people who haven't turned in everything. If you haven't turned in something, finish it and get it in. I'd rather see you succeed in this course than fail, so I'd rather take your stuff than not take your stuff and go, bad, bad, bad. Uh, secondly, there's some work that's unsatisfactory that I've seen that doesn't follow the directions, that doesn't do what it's supposed to, and that violates my half-assed rule. The half-assed rule is if it looks like you just busted it out in two seconds doing a half-assed job, I'm not going to take it. If you have unsatisfactory work, please fix it and get it in. If there's something where you didn't follow the directions, you know, this is something that really caught my eye when I was going over the syllabus quiz was a number of people wrote that you turn in work uh, as a word file attachment, but they didn't turn in their syllabus quiz answers as a word file attachment, or they'd turn in something, another one of the questions was Times New Roman 12 point for body text. And I had a number of people who wrote that in Arial. Mm. So, read the directions. If you turned in something that uh, didn't have a proper font or wasn't an attachment, for the most part, I let that go for the Wednesday work. But anything after that, I'm going to require. And you might get a zero on it. That just means I need you to fix it and get it looking better. One of the problems we have is we don't really have a chance to discuss things, and I know it might be easy to, once you finish an assignment, to forget about it, but you really can't do that here. Once you turned in your Ranging Essays 1 that was in Wednesday work, uh, when s the next section of class opened up Saturday work, had a video going over those Ranging Essays. You need to pay careful attention to these videos, particularly the ones that go over old assignments. And particularly with arranging essays, they're important because we need to get on the same page as far as grading goes, and you need to understand how I grade papers. In the past, I've seen people who go, this was a really great paper, it's my favorite. It doesn't have much of an argument. Well, you should know after seeing me go over the ranging essays that the argument is the main thing I look at. So watch those videos, pay careful attention particularly to the ranging essay videos, and try to figure out why your ratings were different than mine. Hope 
the way this almost always works for me is the first time they're all over the place. For the second ranging S8, they're a little bit closer. And hopefully when we get to the full next full sample student essay, we're thinking on the same level. The closer you can get uh, to how I grade the essays, the better you can make your essay fit my standards. And this is going to be a normal thing. You've got to know what makes good work for a particular class. And I'm giving you a few chances to do that here. One of the nitpicky things that I've seen in a number of papers is people will have extra space between the paragraphs. And Word does this automatically, but one of the things I've always said is that when you get a new edition of Word, you need to undo a lot of the things it does automatically. So, if I wrote a comment about extra spaces between paragraphs on something of yours, what I need you to do is open up Word, then I'm going to need you to click on the Layout tab. This is where you can control margins, spacing, columns, blah, blah, blah. One of the entries in the Layout tab is space, spacing before and after paragraphs. Make sure both of those are set to zero. And you can either do this right when you start, save it in a new template, or you can highlight everything with control A and then set it. But when we get into your actual essays, that's gonna be something you need to pay attention to. We have a peer review session going on for Wednesday work, and hopefully everybody has the best job you can do on your initial draft and it gets, when it gets posted. I've had a few questions about research. First, know that while the library is good and helpful and the reference librarians are great, this is also summer, so they're not going to be there at the last minute. So. Don't wait until the day before something is due before you start doing your research. But more monumental than that, if you're having problems finding sources about your specific subject of analysis, just remember, your research can be anything, anything that helps your final argument. And it doesn't matter if it's written about something else. In the... Profile essay video, I talked about uh, the first bar I have played music at in Bowling Green, Howard's. How it has a different meaning for musicians than it does for the people out in the audience. Well, I can bet you anything that if I was actually writing that paper, there wouldn't be a whole lot of academic sources about that particular bar. There would be plenty of sources about performance stuff about theater would probably help my argument. There might be stuff about other bars that could help my argument. So I can use sources and you can use sources that are about a different subject as long as you explain how this source supports your argument. You got to think a little bit more broadly about arguments, particularly if you're doing a subject that doesn't have a big existing body of work. If it's anything at all that can help you support your argument, if it's something about your critical approach, if it's something about your argument, if it's something about a subject that's kind of like it, you might be able to get good, valuable information. And in fact, I've based papers around, there's no sources on this, but it's kind of like this, but wrong in these ways. And that's perfectly legitimate for what we're doing. When you finish the peer review session, hopefully you get good comments on your own papers. You're going to need to read over those comments and make sure that they make some sense to you. Always try to figure out why the person who wrote it wrote those comments. I had a student once who said that on her peer review papers, everyone said she used too much research. And I thought you couldn't use too much research, which was something I say in class all the time. There's no such thing as too much evidence. So we looked through everything. And the problem wasn't that she was using too much evidence. It was that she wasn't explaining how this evidence supported her argument. So it just looked like she was quoting from a bunch of different people 
where her job is not just to do that, but to relate it to her specific, or in this case, your specific argument. So figure out why people said the things they said. In terms of the Narrative 1 assignment, I looked through them all as I was grading, and I picked the four that striked my fancy the best, and I opened up a new assignment in the Wednesday Work folder. It's in Pink Pink Magenta Heading, down at the bottom. I took the top four Narrative 1 submissions. What I want you to do is I want you to read them all and vote on your favorite. You will get bonus points for voting, and the winner will get bonus. We'll get even more bonus points. And we'll do this for the next narrative, and we'll do this for both of the metaphor assignments. So putting some effort into these things is going to really pay dividends to you. I'll give you, uh, it's a chance to earn a few extra points here by just simply reading some stuff and saying, I like this one best. Really, the narrative assignment and the writing of skills builders in general are more important than you think they are. They look like kind of like goofy assignment, but if you can take these weird pictures and put them in some kind of order, figuring out an order stuff can go into that makes some level of sense that you can explain is one of the best skills you can have as a writer. Uh, the musician Frank Zappa one time said he's a composer, and that just means that he can take a lot of stuff and put it in a nice order. Well, that's a lot of what writing is, too. It's a lot about research, is trying to figure out how these parts fit together and put them together and explain how they fit together. So take the narrative assignments seriously when we do the metaphor when you do your analogy stuff in the future take this seriously too because the more you can develop these skills the better off your final stuff is going to be and i think that's about all i got so if you have questions please keep hitting me up via remind i'm happy to answer your questions I want to help you. If you have work that you got a zero in, just fix whatever it was and turn it in. If you have late work, I'd rather take it than have you fail the class. So just get the stuff done and get it in. Uh, anything else comes up, you could always hit me via remind. And that's what we got for week two notes. I will speak to you in the next video. Let me know if you need me. Bye bye.